I've been practicing cardiology now for 26 years and a number of years of training before that. And we heard back then and we hear today that the number one cause of death in Western countries is heart disease. In fact, it's been that way now for 50 years. And um, that's scary and that's actually just a statistic. But that means a husband died or a father died or a wife died or a parent died. I mean, it's real people, real names um, that I care about a lot and the family cares about a lot. Dean Dupree and uh, Imre Molnar and Blake Krikorian and others that I know that just died tragically. Um, by now it was anticipated that with all the technology in heart disease, we're talking about stress tests and coronary care units and angioplasty and bypass that it wouldn't be the case anymore, but we're still number one heart diseases. And in fact, it's just been reported that in the last year or two it was expected that cancer would overcome heart disease as the number one cause of death. It hasn't happened. Uh, there's actually was a drop in heart disease deaths. It's plateaued now. And I'm concerned that it's plateaued because lifestyle messages have become confused. Uh, butter, good or bad. Dairy, good or bad. Um, uh, bacon, good or bad, and the public is so confused they do whatever the heck they want and some of the progress that was being made with a more consistent messaging into the last five to ten years. So yes, it's still number one, but heart disease is 80% preventable, 80% preventable by not smoking, walking, sleeping, managing your weight, and eating a crap ton of fruit and vegetables a day. That's C-R-A-P-T-O-N, crap ton of fruit and vegetables a day. Uh, it's an important message that just isn't said enough. It's a boring message. It's not sexy like CrossFit and coconut oil, but it's the true message. So that's what my passion is, is to keep repeating that over and over until people leave or they get it. And uh, that's what we're doing here today at the conference. What kind of control do you have over whether you get heart disease? And you know, we know, and it's fascinating, there are cultures that have traditionally very low rates of heart disease. There are cultures with very high rates, 10 times the difference between Japan and Finland at least, maybe 20 times the difference. Well, is that genetic? It isn't genetic because you can take a Japanese person on a traditional Japanese diet, move them to Hawaii, they're still the same person, and that family's heart disease risk goes up significantly because their diet changed. You then move that family to California and you see their risk of heart disease really go up. Their genetics didn't change. It's lifestyle baby. And those studies were done 60 years ago. We realized the importance of your diet, your activity, your stress, your sleep. Um, but if you embrace those lessons, uh, some might call them blue zone lessons, the areas in the world where longevity is the greatest. Very different diets, different cultures, but there's common threads. Plant strong diets, activity, social connections, um, absence of processed food, limited added sugars, enjoying alcohol in many of those communities. You can design a life that's got a very high chance of being heart attack free and heart disease free, the number one killer in America. The side effects are you lower your risk of cancer, lower your risk of diabetes, obesity, dementia. Those are the side effects because they all go around a central lifestyle that is not the Western lifestyle of sitting around gorging Kentucky Fried Chicken watching football games. Yes, um, I'm a big advocate of test, not guess. So what does that mean? Uh, you're 50 years old, you're at your internist, you're 40 years old, you're at your internist, your family doctor. You get your blood pressure, your blood sugar, your blood cholesterol. Maybe you've had an uncle that had a heart attack. Maybe you're sitting around at your job, you've gained some weight, but you get a slap on the back, everything's okay, I'll see you next year, or whatever. Now, if you're 50, you're gonna have a colonoscopy, at least recommended. So you're gonna actually go inside the body to look for a polyp, test, not guess. If you're a woman, you're gonna have a mammogram or maybe a thermogram, but you're not gonna guess, you're gonna test for those conditions. Heart disease doesn't exist in the standard model. It's absolutely fraudulent because two tests were developed 15 to 20 years ago. One is a CAT scan of the heart. Some people don't like radiation, but fortunately technology has advanced that a coronary artery calcium CAT scan of the heart is about the same amount of radiation as a mammogram. No iodine dye, no injection. You just lie down, roll in a machine, roll out and go home, and you may have to pay $100 for the exam, maybe even 150. You will find out, test not guess, if you have silent heart disease. You won't be surprised 
10 years later or five years later that you're having a heart attack, a stent or bypass, you'll know the score. In fact, it's called the coronary artery calcium score. It's a number, could be zero, could be 800 and you've got silently diseased arteries you had no clue about. There's also an ultrasound of the carotid called the CIMT, carotid intimal medial thickness ultrasound, not as widely available, uh, also usually not insurance covered, except the state of Texas. When you're 50 years old in Texas, you can get a free carotid ultrasound or a free calcium score insurance covered in terms of free because one legislator got that through their state government and it's a covered benefit. So test not guess, find out if you're walking around with the number one killer in America with the same philosophy that a mammogram or a colonoscopy searches for disease by looking at the organ. Let's look at the organ, the arteries and the heart arteries and find out where you're going. Then let's implement a plan if there's disease to stop and even reverse it. There are advanced tests. Um, one of the most unappreciated uh, parts of the body is that 50,000 miles of arteries in your body. 50,000 miles of arteries. Think about your car hitting 50,000 miles. That's how many miles of arteries in your body. Every artery is lined with something like a wallpaper. It's one cell layer thin. So thin you can't see it. Under a microscope you can. That's called your endothelium, E-N-D-O-thelium, your inside skin. And that endothelium is a barrier between the blood in the vessel and the wall. But we learned over the last 30, 40 years, it's a very active, incredibly important organ. If you were to take all that out and lay it out, it'd fill eight tennis courts. So it's this huge organ of activity. If your endothelium is healthy, you're very resistant to stroke and heart attack. How do you make your endothelium healthy? You don't smoke, you exercise, you lower the saturated fat or get it out of your diet. You eat rich, nutrient-rich fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, whole grains, and legumes. Um, you manage your blood sugar by avoiding added sugars, added syrups. Well, there is a test called the Endopat. It's a machine that's available in certain specialty heart clinics like the one I have in Detroit. And you can measure if your endothelium is working well. And if it isn't, we've got to institute a program. Certain foods, watermelon, beets, spinach, red spinach, arugula can improve the health of your endothelium. So when you're eating in the plant-based world, you're eating an endothelial healthy uh, diet. When you're eating at McDonald's, you are destroying your endothelium. They should say billions of endothelial cells damaged. Are you nuts? No nuts? So the history of nuts is, I'm a little nuts too, um, that there is this field of science that says you can create a diet that can reverse decades of heart artery problems with a change in diet. And when you go back to the 1940s and early 1950s, some of the pioneers in this field, uh, Dr. Lester Morrison in Los Angeles, designed a diet based on some studies that he was reading that was very low in added fats, and he excluded nuts from his program. In the 1951, he documented he could cut heart deaths in half by a diet that was very low in added fats and had no nuts and seeds. So that got into the concept that this might work. Um, there actually wasn't that much data that nuts and seeds were healthy at the time. But things moved forward and Nathan Pritikin opened the Pritikin Longevity Center. He wanted to reduce the amount of fats in the diet to a low level, total fats, so nuts and seeds were left out. When Dr. Dean Ornish started studying heart disease with diet and has done some of the most unbelievably important studies on heart disease, cancer, and aging with plant-based diets, he wanted low total calories from fat with the idea that if you have a low blood cholesterol, you're gonna have a very low risk of heart problems and he proved that to be true. So he didn't add nuts and seeds and the Cleveland Clinic had a program with Dr. Esselstyn. Well, along the way was other data points like the Adventist Health Study in Loma Linda and other places that actually showed nuts and seeds were very favorable in terms of longevity. And we found walnuts could be very healthy for your arteries when you study them with techniques like the endopat and your endothelium. So it became a bit confused. And I think now most of us have become a bit more liberal that of all the possible transgressions that you could add to a plant-based diet, fruits, vegetables, legumes, whole grains, adding in a small amount of nuts and seeds every day is now um, okay. It's in fact maybe favorable. You've probably got to give a nod to Dr. Joel Furman uh, and books like Eat to Live and Such, The End of Heart Disease's new book, 
that has kind of been pushing on that topic because there is science that it is a very healthy, fiber-rich, nutrient-rich, um, polyphenol-rich, uh, polyunsaturated, fat-rich, not saturated fat-rich uh, food group. So uh, yes to nuts and seeds, but we're not talking a whole bag of salty pistachios or honey roasted peanuts. We're talking, you know, your oatmeal has a, a teaspoon or tablespoon of you know whole walnuts on top. Good choice. Yeah, so the question revolves around um, our diet in the Western world and specifically in the United States. And there's a story that goes like this. Um, I'm gonna answer the question the way I wanna answer the question, which is certain scientists led particularly by a PhD in Minnesota, Dr. Ansel Keys, identified that fat in the diet and ultimately saturated fat in the diet uh, would raise your blood cholesterol. That's actually true. At science before the food industry got involved and was uh, mudding up researchers' interests. That was all the science showed, saturated fat in the diet, things like butter, cheese, meat, and eggs raise your cholesterol. And when you have a high cholesterol, you develop heart disease more regularly. That's true too. So saturated fat in the diet creates heart attacks and heart deaths. That's the real science, although you'd be very confused nowadays. So the story went, Dr. Keyes and his colleagues actually manipulated the government and manipulated the American Heart Association to sell this program to the American public that they should reduce the amount of uh, saturated fat in their diet, which is still the strong recommendation of the American Heart Association. In fact, they've gotten even stricter in the last couple of years, five to 6% of your calories, saturated fat or less. It used to be 7% or more. Um, anyways, that the problem all along has been sugar. The whole problem was too much added sugar and we missed the boat and if we would have uh, grabbed on in the 1970s to uh, the public message, don't add added sugar, we would have solved all the health problems in America by this point. That's a common statement. Well, it turns out that there's so many false statements in that um, kind of body of uh, propaganda uh, it would take me hours to go through, but what's really happened since 1970 is Americans eat five to 600 more calories a day, including more oils, fats, sugars, and protein. Every food group has increased. So they never listened to the government. If the government and the American Heart Association was saying reduce your added fats, reduce your saturated fats, the Americans said, I like fast food and I like convenience, I like vending machines, I like food trucks. They didn't do it. In fact, five to 600 calories more a day means you're gonna get fatter and fatter and fatter. What's happened in America? We are doing whatever we want. We've got this abundance of processed food. 60% of our calories are processed food. We're adding calories every day. Um, these are calorie dense, nutritionally poor food choices. So yes, calories have gone up a lot and we're suffering from it. But it certainly wasn't the advice of uh, health heroes and health researchers in the 50s, 60s and 70s that um, that's what a food industry should respond and fast food industry should respond. You know, we used to live for centuries with a, a, sparse, a, a scar scarcity of food. Now we have such an abundance, we suffer from lack of willpower and, uh, and food rules, but uh, it's not the fault of these researchers or um, the American Heart Association. Yeah, you would think if you had identical twins that they should be at equal risk of uh, disease like heart disease. And um, if one had a heart attack at age 45, the other must have disease. And when they've studied identical twins, so their genetic code is essentially identical, there's actually a very different risk of a number of diseases, including heart disease, if they ended up living in different parts of the country with different jobs. Um, so it was one of the points that proved environment tends to trump genetics. It's not always true. There are certain cancers, heart conditions, certainly congenital heart disease. If you're born with a serious abnormality, that's a genetic uh, and developmental problem that's not related to environment. But if you have identical twins and one follows an exercise, stress management, non-smoking, um, active lifestyle, rich in plant-based nutrition uh, without chemicals and added fats to excess, and one takes the standard American diet, you're gonna end up with two very different heart patients in terms of risk and actual disease. So again, the genetics load the gun, but the environment pulls the trigger, control your environment, make good decisions.